This podcast is a production of Open Pediatrics, an open access online community of healthcare professionals sharing best practices from around the world. Visit openpediatrics.org for more. Welcome to World Shared Practice Forum podcast. I'm Dr. Jeff Burns, Chief of Critical Care at Boston Children's Hospital and Professor at Harvard Medical School. We're very pleased to have with us today Dr. Robert Tasker. Dr. Tasker is editor in chief of the journal Pediatric Critical Care Medicine. He is also professor of anesthesia and the founding chair in neurocritical care, as well as senior associate physician in the Department of Anesthesia, Critical Care, and Pain Medicine at Boston Children's Hospital. Robert, we're back here today as part two of your year in review, thoughts from the editor-in-chief on your first year as uh, editor-in-chief at Pediatric Critical Care Medicine, and it's a privilege to have you here. When we were concluding part one, you were noting many of the unique features that you have added to the journal, including the narrative pieces, the notes on clinical trials and statistics, clinical trial design and statistics. But we were also working our way through really what you saw as the highlights of some of the publications over the year. We only made our way through about one third of it. So where should we pick up? What would you like to highlight as we begin our discussion in part two? So if you recall from the previous podcast, I I set this threshold of altmetric 60 or above to identify major articles that are must-reads that people are talking about. And they come from different fields, different areas. And that's the exciting thing about being at the bedside. You need to know everything. So here we go. So in the May issue, there were two articles. The first had an alt metric of sort of 69 or 85. It depends how you do the counting. And this was by Assad Beshish, who is in Atlanta, writing about cardiopulmonary bypass and hyperoxia and outcomes. This was a retrospective study, and it provided me with the opportunity of doing something new with research material that gets submitted to us. So we had an editorial written by Mark Peters, who is also doing an oxygen study in the United Kingdom. And for him to put together what we know about oxygen and outcomes or hyperoxia and outcomes, and put this study from Atlanta in that context. It also meant that I could introduce a new format called PCCM Notes, Methods and Statistics. And I asked Chris Horvat in Pittsburgh to write about association studies and what we can and can't derive from those types of studies. And Chris Horvat's PCCM notes is the highest ranked PCCM notes from 2021. So that altogether was and is a great package to read. And we're going to get more on oxygen in 2022. So keep referring back to this material. The other article from May was by Patrick Davis and colleagues in the United Kingdom. I believe Patrick is in Nottingham. And he wrote about the UK experience of SARS-CoV-2 treatment. That one article got a altmetric of 96. So People were keen to read it. I know the UK group have published elsewhere. We're still interested in seeing your material at PCCM because people at PCCM will read it. So now in June, Melissa Azom from California, Randall Wetzel's group wrote about recurrent neural network and continuous assessment of risk of mortality in the ICU. Talon Bennett wrote the editorial for this, and the altmetric for that article, 68. The other article from June that was above the 60 threshold on the altmetric was by Carolyn Osmet, writing using the ELSO and Pediatric ECMO database, and writing about 
transfusion management in ECMO cases, altmetric 79. We're going to hear more about coagulation and transfusion in ECMO, but it's a huge, huge topic. And so uh, something to read. Then in July, Yuri Bogetz from Boston, writing about complex conditions and supporting parents during their ICU stay. Daniel DeCourcy, who edits our PCCM narrative section, was the senior author on this paper. The alt metric for that paper was 70. Sandeep Tripathi and the SCCM virus study we've heard about. COVID-19 and PICUs, alt metric of 61. And then lastly, for this uh, second one third of the year, Michael Fendora at Atlanta, who uh, both Jeff and I know well, having worked with him, he wrote an outstanding article about workload and outcome in the pediatric ICU, an alt metric of 113. This article and the editorial, a must read, solid article and highly respected. And then lastly, for August, John Lill from Guy's Hospital in the United Kingdom wrote about multi-site venovenous ECMO in small infants. Graham McLaren, we were pleased to get to write the editorial along with his cardiac surgical colleagues. The alt metric of that and the illustrations are brilliant. The alt metric, 104. So that's the second one third and, you know, a treasure just to read these articles. Robert, your enthusiasm for the wonderful manuscripts that you've been able to publish is uh, evident to us all. And it's a characteristic you share with your predecessor. There was nothing better than listening to Pat Kohanek talk with such enthusiasm as he gave this same year in review. And before we go to the final third of the year, 2021, I have to ask, what didn't you publish? What do you wish that you could have? And of course, we're not talking about specific authors and manuscripts, but perhaps topics that you just didn't have the room for. So I accepted everything that I want to, to publish, but what I'm concerned about, because I'm, I'm selfish about articles for our readers, what I want to attract to PCCM are articles about ethics. I want a section in the journal called PCCM Ethics. I read all this ethics literature and I even write the ethics literature, but it doesn't appear in PCCM. It's elsewhere. And I think, I think the time is ripe for building that field. I'd like mini symposia, the ability to group articles and bring the time course of articles in the journal such that a reader can get to read three articles on a topic and someone distinguished in the field writing a commentary that brings them together for us. So I managed to do this for, I think, May or June 2022. I've got someone to write the commentary and we've got three articles. I don't really want to give away what it's going to be about, but I've managed to do it. I want to see more like that. Obviously, I want more clinical physiology and concise clinical physiology review. As I tell fellows that I teach, whether they like it or not, they're clinical physiologists, and we need more of this material. And then lastly, I need to see more case conferences. I've, I've got one in the pipeline. Uh, we've had one published. You know, we need like three or four a year. So I would like to see more, and I'd like to see them from, I don't know if Kath Maitland listens to this, but, you know, I would like to see how they manage malaria or cerebral malaria. That's what we want to read about. We want to read about how people are managing dengue fever out in Vietnam. We want sub publications from there. There are many conditions that we would love to read about. We might practice 
in certain areas of the world, but we want to hear all about this. So it's built around the illustrations and the data, but that's what I'd love to see. Well, Robert, you're building upon the legacy of your predecessor and the inaugural editor-in-chief of PCCM in a wonderful way, and I can't help but reflect that I think you're moving to, trying to, to tapping some of the real strengths of our field and promoting knowledge exchange on what we are strong at. We're a small field, and as so as you well know better than anyone, RCTs of significant power to assess the efficacy of an intervention is not really uh, our strength because it's not, it's not easily done. On the other hand, there are a lot of interesting things being done around the world in various ways, and you just outlined a series of initiatives that will help tap and share that knowledge to colleagues around the world. Now, could we conclude uh, this part two of the year in review by finishing that last third of 2021? What were the articles that you think, even in retrospect, deserve our attention and uh, highlighting here? So September, Charlotte Woods Hill at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and the Bright Star Group had a consensus document on when to do blood cultures in the ICU setting. Great illustration, 108 on the old metric, very important study. Also in September, Lauren Risman, who at the time was at Lurie Children's Hospital, I, I believe uh, she has moved, looking at parent-physician reporting of discussions about prognosis, altmetric of 69, such an important study. October, Todd Carsey's wrote about the compliance with antibiotic guidelines for ventilator-associated infection, a sort of vein two study, and Dr. Nabuki Shine from Japan did the editorial, altmetric of 88. Also in October, uh, Franco Diaz from Chile and Uruguay and other authors uh, wrote about driving pressure and normalized energy or power in ARDS, had an editorial with that, altmetric 61, very important study for us to get our head around, you know, uh, we've seen a lot of information from adult ARDS literature, but what should we be doing in pediatrics? Then November, Laurence Ducharme Crevier from Canada had a PICU follow-up study uh, looking at two months post-discharge and the needs of patients. Small number of patients, but an important study in our field, altmetric, 152. This is the number one slot for 2021. Then Dan and Bagdur from the USA wrote about outcomes of firearm injuries admitted to US PICUs, a very important VPS study, altmetric 71. And then lastly, December, Andrew Geneslo from New York wrote about late outcomes after invasive mechanical ventilation and focused on mental health disorders some years after discharge. Altmetric 76. This article was unique because it gave us the opportunity not only to have an editorial on causal inference from Jim Fackler, and his group at Johns Hopkins, but also Naomi Kreef, a UK statistician, to write about propensity score matching. So this trio of articles need to be read together. So very important. Well, Robert, again, um, you've got me uh, itching to go back and uh, look at 2021. Seriously, I'm going to do that. And by the way, I have to salute Martin Kniber's editorial accompanying that article on driving pressure and power in the October issue. We did a world share practice with him. And that editorial that he wrote in your journal, I think is Martin Kniber's editorial 
I think is one of the most comprehensive and concise descriptions of what we know, the evidence on really kind of personalized mechanical ventilation um, in pediatrics. But we turn now to your final thoughts. What should we know about uh, what's coming in 2022? 2022 is going to be even more exciting. There's more content and, you know, I just love the material that comes in. It comes into my inbox on a Wednesday as a bundle and I try and clear it and move things forward by the end of the weekend. I want to see more machine learning and AI. We've got to sort this out as a field. And whether it's something that's useful or something that's not useful. Point of care ultrasound, we need to see more of this because, again, I need to be convinced and readers need to be convinced that this is something that really should be taking over our field. You know, one article I haven't mentioned was an article by Dave Cantor on. Um, femoral muscle, um, ultrasound, and as a nutrition parameter. I think for me, I'm, I am somewhat biased because I do know Dave Cantor, but that for me was probably one of the most beautiful articles of the year. Not much talked about, but we ought to be talking about it because we feed patients and we have no idea whether or not we're nourishing them properly or how we should be nourishing them. And here's an article that helps us. We've got to do something about outcomes. We had three articles in January 2021, one by Hector Wong, one by Murray Pollock, and one by Sankar from India, all indicating to us that Discharge outcomes were not a useful metric. What we need to know is either three months to one year. And I think that's a game changer for our field. We need to be realigning and readjusting how we assess manuscripts based on the outcome measures. And the things that you've already talked about, we're going to see more on pediatric ARDS. I think as a field, we need to sort out nasal cannula oxygen and high flow nasal cannula. And, you know, we've got a trio of material coming through. I can't remember which month that's going to be, but that's about the costs of bronchiolitis managed with high flow nasal cannula because they're all coming to the ICU. So we now know from Canada, USA, and Australia and New Zealand, that there's a problem with this. And we don't have a single randomized controlled trial. So we've got some writing about that. Acute kidney injury. I don't know, is my answer. I need to be informed and taught. So we've got a clinical science review on AKI, post-cardiac surgery. And we need, we need to this field to be sort of formatted better for us to understand. So we've got more material on that. So yeah, lots of excitements. Really pleased to be doing this. Really pleased to be seeing your papers. Perhaps just a final word for young investigators. Everything is hard. It's hard to get published. And you know, if you're a young investigator, submit your work. But select your work carefully. If you're going to spend years studying a project, make sure that you've picked well. Pick your mentor well and be guided by them. Unfortunately, we do turn down a lot of studies. I think there are lots of options. There's the brief report option. There's the research letter option. But also, you know, what's important now is pay close attention to the narrative that's running through pediatric critical care medicine. We publish one third of all literature about pediatric critical care in PCCM. Have a look to see what the current narrative is and the current interest is and follow with that. Or find something completely innovative and new 
that's going to stun the field. But th those are my words of advice. Well, Dr. Robert Tasker, Editor-in-Chief of Pediatric Critical Care Medicine, thank you for sharing your thoughts over these two parts of the World Share Practice Forum on your first year in review. I think I speak for colleagues around the world in saying that um, we're excited about some of the changes that you've brought and built upon uh, Pat Gohanek's work and new changes to PCCM, and your enthusiasm is contagious. And uh, I mentioned earlier, and I mean it, I'm going to go back in the next several days and relook at 2021 now with um, a new lens that you've provided for us today. Thank you, Jeff. It's been a real pleasure. Love talking about the journal, love talking about our authors, our reviewers, our papers. So thank you to everyone around the world. This has been a production of Open Pediatrics. You can find the resources and journal articles referenced in this podcast in the description. We have more podcasts like this one available everywhere you get your podcasts. Visit openpediatrics.org for more information.